Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I'm aware uh, there are, are a number of, of shareholders uh, on this um, uh, forum watching, uh, searching for answers and, you know, obviously curious to know what's going on. And I, and I think, I think given what's been happening with the share price development and obviously all the press that's been, you know, all the various CNBCs and all the various articles that have come out, uh, you're getting a sense that things are going uh, rather well. So my name is Lewis Black. I'm the CEO, chairman and founder of Almonte. And this is my story. Um, essentially, we are a solely a tungsten operator. We've been around for a long, for many years. One of our mines in Portugal has been running for 126 years. Almonte in its current guise has been close to 15 years. We are uh, essentially the last man standing and for good reason. Uh, this is already out of date. So I see from this morning, our, our stock, uh, obviously there was a big event last week in Korea and we're seeing after the holidays yesterday in Canada, uh, the stock is, is responding. But I think what's important is to note that I am a, a very significant shareholder in this. Uh, so it always helps when, when you're looking at a stock, does the management have real flesh in the game? And the answer in that particular question is absolutely. We have our asset in Portugal, as I said, it's running for 126 years. It, it still holds the title of being the only tungsten mine that makes money, which is terrifying as well as wonderful. Um, but I think it's worth noting that it consistently makes money. It doesn't just stuff a quarter and look good for a quarter and then uh, piece your way, it, 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 it makes money. Our Sandong mine is considered to be, regardless of whatever some of our competitors say, it is the largest tungsten mine in the world. It's certainly the most famous. It has a mythical status within Korea. Uh, we have a huge legacy in which to live up to. It runs at roughly uh, four times our actual physical grade at Panascara. And one can only imagine if we can make money with 0.14% at Panascara, what we can do with over 0.5%. Uh, Valtrachal is still in, yeah, as I said, pre-feasibility. Spain is not rushing to issue any permits anytime soon, but this is okay. It's not going anywhere. Tungsten doesn't go off. It's there for the future. Although, to be honest, it seems with Portugal, the uh, EU is now looking to support us opening an additional level there, but that, we'll talk about that in a while. And Los Santos is a depleted mine with tailings that at some point... It's on my to-do list, but we've been extraordinarily busy with Korea, as you're going to see. Um, as I said, Panascara is one of the longest, you know, producing mines in the world, certainly in tungsten. It is a fifth generation base of knowledge that has enabled us to be extremely competitive when looking at any other project, as well as the fact that it gives us that advantage of competing with China in any kind of price environment, because we have developed a, a number of significant technologies. No, it's not ore sorters. This is the, you know, this is a far more sophisticated level of, of technology that we focus on. And, and we've been very successful at it. And I think in Samdong is going to be an enormous recipient of that. Samdong is, is uh, as I've said, well advanced now. Uh, we've gone through the rainy season, and I'm gonna talk about this in a bit as well, but. It is a significant construction that is now imminently due to complete. And Valtrachal, yes, it's there, it's ready to go. Let's see what happens politically uh, in Spain. Um, well, we've been around a long time. We make money. Previous exit we made from this sector with our Portuguese mine was we, we yielded 21 times earnings. Well, we sold it for 21 times earnings. Some shareholders yield 40 times on their money. We make money. Um, we have unique offtakes with hard floors, no cap on the upside. We've attracted tier one financing, uh, which is again, unique in tungsten. Uh, never ha have any tungsten mine attracted uh, in its entirety, a tier one financing from what I consider to be the best project finance lender in the world, which is KFW Apex Bank. We have a supportive shareholders. We never went down the road of, of finding a rich uncle. 
Uh, so we were driven by, you know, a, a, a funds agenda. We've always had a good mix of shareholders who've been very supportive over the years. And I, I think we have certainly seen the, the, the benefits of that strategy. And we operate in countries with legal systems, um, which is very much on the, you know, it's, it's very much demanded by our customers, but also it enables us to sleep well. We don't have to worry about the president deciding his son wants to be in the business and a new name on the door. We have a significant growth within the company, uh, both from our Molly deposit in Korea, which is 150 meters from our existing infrastructure of our tungsten, as well as our downstream. We receive premium on our Portuguese material, not because we're Portuguese, but because the material is extremely clean and, and therefore is very desirable for certain applications for tungsten. We have been achieving all of our milestones, hitting all our bogeys, yes, slower than some of you would like. I'm fully aware of it. I'm an impatient shareholder too. But as I've always said, I'm walking to the finish line, not running. Let's not be in a hurry to lose money. Let's make sure that when we meet or reach the, the finish line, we're in good shape to make money. We obviously are in a situation where 90% of the world's tungsten comes from China and Russia. And we're one of the largest producers in a growing market. So I, I think this is a, a great positive moment. Every commodity has its day. We're certainly seeing that in tungsten. So level four is what we're working on now in Portugal. This will increase our output there by 40%. Uh, it's a project that's supported by the Portuguese government, uh, you know, publicly supported. And we are going through a, a program with the EU where they will provide subsidy and soft loans in order to uh, allow us to accelerate that development, which is, is obviously a positive uh, moment. Department of Commerce came to visit Portugal, um, which was, I think, a, a good statement on how they viewed us. They've now more pivoted towards Korea, which, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, equipment Sam Dong, yeah, this is this this slides even all of that. Yes, everything's there. Um the all our all our debt on our books is either already been converted, is going to be converted, or is extended. It's all in friendly hands. So there's nothing life-threatening within the business. Uh, I know some of our competitors like to say, oh, they've got all this debt. Well, not really. And and all of it's you know friendly, so it's very important. We never exposed ourselves to desperate loans. We always ensured that whoever was involved with us believed in what we were trying to do. The strategies for the Molly deposit are, are now uh, moving more quickly than when I last spoke to, to this forum. Uh, we are now discussing off-taking uh, with that project. And, and I think that's really going to be my next step. And then I'll do the confirmation drilling of the historical data to bring in 10, 12 years of proven and probable. But I think that's um, an important value add, especially at forty-four thousand dollars a ton for Molly. Uh, it, it's it's an it's a completely unrecognized value point for the company. And given that Korea has now gone from the fourth largest importer of Molly to the second largest importer of Molly in the world, we're just seeing more and more growth in that market. And the drawdown of the KFW, as I've said to all of you. If KFW are still allowing us to do drawdowns, everything's fine. You may not have all the nice pictures to, to pour over and, you know, find things to, to ask questions on. But if KFW are still allowing drawdowns, they are satisfied with their independent engineer hatch that everything is going according to plan. Samdom, well, it's going rather well. I think is the best way to put it. Um, uh, it's a huge deposit. There's no doubt about this. It contains both tungsten and moly, completely separate from each other, but separated by about 150 meters, therefore making a very interesting scenario with the moly because it's very cheap to get in there because we're already there with infrastructure and it's fully permitted. It's covered under our existing permit. So there's no, well, we've got to get permits. We've got to, it's done so we can go. And the tungsten oxide is, is really because 97% of tungsten oxide that's used in, in Korea comes in from China. And Korean consumers 
are, are wanting and the government is wanting more choice. So therefore, they've been very supportive in, in this approach of downstreaming and, of course, expanding to phase two, our output. So, yes, I mean, what's new? So USGS, five of them rolled up about a month ago, I think it was, unannounced. So they let us know the week before. That was rather a surprise. We hadn't known that they were coming. They, they just said that they had to update uh, their current understanding of the project at the request of the US government. This will be out, they said, before April of next year. Um, um, the governor has been to visit, uh, but last week we obviously had a huge event as well, which I'll talk about briefly in a second. The most important thing for me as an operator is that the work at the pilot plants in both Portugal and, and Korea have been successfully concluded. We now have a locked in process. That means when we open, we're not going to have an oops moment where we say, well, you know, it looked good on paper, but we didn't really know, we've got to change this. We need more money, it doesn't work, we're losing money. That's not going to happen. We have been very adamant that I would not give the green lights for the installation of equipment until this process had finished and it has done. Um, global geologists come to visit. Well, it's a very unique site. It's enormous and it's very clearly defined. So geologists, they like those things and they came to visit the, the and now they want to do internships. So they, 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 and I think it's very important because through education is how we survive. That's very important to remember. That's how we've been able to get this far. And, you know, things like the gas station, you know, unfortunately the previous owner, he died and, and the residents without gas uh, and we needed to put anyway, some storage for these at sites. So we thought it was better to have the gas station. It's all part of our ESG. And, and I think it highlights the fact that we're always thinking how to basically belong in our environment. Okay, well, as you can see, we, we all donned our suits this day. I have to say I, I rocked out a very nice three piece. This ceremony was very important. The ceremony was to do with how advanced we now were, the sun was out, and we had local, regional, and national governments publicly state their support for this. Now, I think, you know, maybe we think that this is a bit too much, you know, if you're in Australia or in Canada, but it, you have to understand, in Korea, there is a process of how you do things, and that you have got to be part of that culture, otherwise you can't exist. And, and it's not that we're just building a mine, we're handling the legacy of Korea tungsten. And, and I, can't, oh, I can't overstate how important that is. What that mine did for that country is, is legendary. It had a mythical status, so we have to honor that. And I think what we saw last week, last Thursday, was uh, a now a full public, acknowledgement of all government departments and you know, politically support for this project. And this is extremely important. It means that in their minds, the project is entirely de-risked. They believe that our approach has been sensitive and respectful of Korea Tungsten, uh, that our uh, integration into the community has been complete. Uh, you know, this, marked an extremely important moment. And I think our stock price is reflecting what we're seeing here because now it's saying to everyone in South Korea, the project is, is a go and, and, and we feel comfortable to stand behind it. Oh, and that is a, a catch as met. You can see me in this picture uh, because we actually also support the, the high school in their baseball endeavors. Though I prefer soccer, they do love baseball. So, as you can see, uh, this is one of the, the uh, not the latest, but, but a fairly recent picture of site, foundation works. The single most important part of this construction is foundation. We are pouring just over 22,000 cubic meters of concrete. That's an airport. We've had to raise the whole site in order to garnish enough flat land to build what we have to. All of our buildings are partially subterranean. And that's a number of reasons because we have to deal with a, with a climate there that is very variable. 
In winter, we can have two meters or more of snow and minus 25 in wind chill. In early spring, we can have 100% humidity. In summer, we can have 35 degree heat. We have rains in, in the late summer of 60 liters or more per hour. You can see that we have to deal and contend with a number of weather items that are not conducive to a balanced processing environment. Plus, you can see that we are subject to gravity. Everything on that mountain is trying to push us further down the mountain. So the civil works, which have taken a great deal of time, but are essential. This is the most important part of the construction, the civil works. Build a good foundation. And this mine goes for 100 plus years. And what we saw in rainy season was that we, you know, we designed all the drainage and everything from CADs, but in rainy season this year, we were able to physically see how it drains and we had to make certain changes to be more efficient. We hope for a, 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 a you know, kind winter, but in some way, I kind of hope we get a tough winter because again, it gives us the opportunity to make changes now before we're fully in production and then we have real cost to do it. So, I mean, underground, We've built a three kilometer uh, tunneling system so that we comply with 21st century safety standards. Complete, done. As I said, we built the whole site up nearly 16 meters. You can imagine that's significant. We're pouring over 22,000 cubic meters of concrete. So, yeah, it's the real deal. And I, I, I keep saying to everybody, I mean, we just had last week at the ceremony, we had Significant friends of the family investors come out from New York, you know, between them, they have 30, nearly 40 million shares. They're ecstatic of what's going on at site, but they understand the scale of this. This is being built to do 1.2 million tons. Phase one is 645,000 tons. So all of our financial modeling is 645,000 tons, but the scale of this is designed to, to double that. And that's being done now. We're not gonna add it on later. It's being done now. So, you know, I know that there's been frustration about not seeing the progress, but now we can be, we can share it a lot more. One, because it's material. And secondly, because the government says you can. They've supported it now publicly. It's a huge deposit. We're not running out of material. And, and just in case there is a geopolitical issue in the world regarding tungsten, because of the nature of this deposit is horizontal, you can theoretically open multiple portals to increase your outputs. It's just a question of money and time. But I, I think this is why in my sector, this project is exciting, but also it elicits lots of, you know, dramas from my competitors. Because how can you compete with this? Really? I mean, you know, you've got to also present your story, but you, you can't compete with this. None of our other projects can compete with this. As I said, we have unique offtakes. No one else has the offtakes that we have. We have unique funding. No one else has this type of funding. And we have hard guarantees from EU government, uh, which we will see continue, I believe, through the expansion of Panascara as well. We are governmental-wise given great credibility. And I think this is important. We've already made our bed within governments. Therefore, you know, if you're a South Korean government, the US government, it's much easier to transact with us because someone else and other governments have already come in into this. Um, ah, you know, I mean, what can I say? It's huge. And, you know, high grade, low cost. We're doing flotation. So we've got high recovery. Spent three years in a pilot plant ensuring the process was effective. Um, I feel pretty good, I think. I, I, I you know, I, as a shareholder, not a CEO, but talking as a shareholder, I'm going to do very well out of this. Milestones. Uh, you know, I mean, I think we're going to see start seeing, you know, the mining activities are already underway. We already have too much ore on surface. I don't know what to do with it. You know, it's strange about the, the ore on surface. It's con we consider it waste because it's been generated through the mine development. But the waste is the same grade as what we were mining in Los Santos, almost 0.3. We don't have barren areas. It's a kind of unusual situation where normally with waste, you just, you know, you just put it, you, as, you know, use it as waste, put it in your waste dump. But this is material we're going to pass. 
I think we are going to open, but everybody just be cool. I'm here. We're going to make sure this works. In terms of budgets, the 125 million is what it's costing. I'm going to be just under $6 million over budget. Eh, it's not ideal, but in the scheme of things, I'm pretty happy because I'm looking at other, and KFW have talked to me about other projects that are 40 or 50% of a budget. I'm 6 million or 125, so I don't know what that is. It's a few percentile. Um, and so the, funnily enough, the waste that I'm not throwing away, which was never put into our modeling, can be utilized uh, very quickly to, to yield income. So I'm not so unhappy. Um, downstream, we're gonna downstream. Uh, the government has already given us a piece of land and the scoping study is already underway. We would expect basic engineering to be finished by the end of this year. And then we'll start talking you know, with off-takers. Well, we already started talking with off-takers, but we'll start talking with the lender KFW in January. But we're running out of time, so I've got about two minutes to go. Um, phase two, yes, the whole project has been designed to double the output. So the plants, the grinding, everything we're building right now is for expansion. This is quite unique for a junior miner. You know, junior miners in tungsten generally just produce tungsten and lose money, uh, unfortunately. You know, anyone can produce tungsten. It's making money that's more tricky. We'd like to think we make money by producing tungsten. And so we've tried to, uh, to plan for the future without saying, oh, we could double our production, but we're going to have to go raise 100 million. We're gonna... It's not that. Our estimates is going to cost me 17 million to expand on top of what I already have, already in place which is not, you know, a huge number. It doesn't include the downstream, the 17 million, but just for all, we can expand. So I think we've tried to plan for the future. And I'd like to again say that our focus here is to make money mining tungsten, not just to mine tungsten. Uh, the molly, again, this is a huge value that we just never really utilized. I know I keep saying I'm going to, yeah, I've been very busy with, with the tungsten, but I think with, the, with what we've seen with all the politicians and what happened last week is we've been inundated now for requests for tours by Korean consumers, both for tungsten and for molly. So we're going to be running all these kind of tours over the next couple of months. Let's see how this goes. And our reserves, we've got plenty of tungsten. Um, and it, 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 as I said, it, a very significant project. So I think Panascara, we can talk about another time. I'll put this presentation up. There's a movie going up on the website, but I think we've got five minutes left. Let's turn it over to questions because I know we always have lots of questions. Absolutely, Lewis. Thank you very much again for the great presentation, the updates and so on. Yes, you looked uh, presidential in your trippy suit, I may say. Uh, that being said... Um, we do have a few questions as usual, but far less now that the share price is raising incre <laughs> incredibly. Yeah. See how, happy, how easy it is to make shareholders happy? No questions on the share price, and usually there's at least 27. So let's take it on that. We'll be able to discuss now fundamentals of the company. Um, so first off, a few questions clarifying. Or will you see production from uh, Sangdong in 2024? You went through a slide and we saw phase one kind of production 2024. You know, we, we, we already started. We're about to start the soft commissioning on the grinding circuits. I think... If you wanted to make a safer bet, you'd say first quarter of 25. It depends on the winter. So I'm I'm very kind of winter and weather dependent. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of, of outputs, revenue, we're looking into, into 25, you know, the end of the first quarter at the latest. But we've already started, we will start shortly, soft commissioning on the grinding circuit. And that, that's important. It's a phased opening. Yes, exactly. And for people not maybe used to that, uh, there is a difference between production, commercial production and mining, which is um, maybe if you can say a few words about that. Oh, well, I mean, look, I mean, when you first commission a plant, you're producing, whether it's to the standard or the grade that you require. And a lot of the times you don't want it to be, you want to make those adjustments in that commissioning. So commercial production is normally at the end of a, a commissioning and testing period, which is a nine month period normally. Uh, but when we're doing soft commissioning now, it doesn't mean we add nine months to the end 
of when we actually build the you know finish the plant. So we're commissioning, you know, consistently as we can as we construct. So perfect. I think that's you know relatively clear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had a question uh, asking exactly when was a the ceremony conducted and b uh, the pictures that we saw of the updated construction. Uh, what is the date also on that? The the ceremony was last Thursday, so I'm very jet lagged. I just got back, so I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit tired. Um, and the pictures, I think, from the drone, uh, were probably from about three and a half weeks ago. We have close to at any one time anywhere between 86 and 92 people from the con the contracting firm working on that site doing the form work uh, you know we've had to reinforce all of the side of the mountain with all the anchors they go in 100 meters into the mountain so there's a, there's a, a huge amount of stuff and and also as we we build the plant and uh, then we we cover you know it's it's subterranean so what you're seeing on surface it, some of it's going down four or five meters so there's a lot of stuff that you can't even see from service, but it's probably about three and a half weeks old. I apologize, it's not a new one, but we had nice weather that day. You know, it's, I mean, that time of year when I get some sunshine, take the pictures. Perfect. I could give you uh, really pictures, but they, they just look like miserable. Yes. Anyone who flew a drone can can know that actually. It's, uh, it's humidity and so on affected it very, very much. That being said, uh, Tom is asking after six months in 2024, and I think this you're going to be able to shine a light on that and explain very quickly. Uh, after six months in 2024, you made 1.8 million from mining operations, but in the end, the company had a loss of 14.8 million. And now this is a conclusion he draws. How will Sendung change these numbers in first half 2026 if prices don't change well i'd like to thank one of my competitors for making that question i think it's very important to draw a question to my financials fortunately they don't do it so much with yours uh, which is pretty good for you um we lose money because we have non-cash items like for instance exchange rates like yeah. for instance accruing interest we don't pay out the interest it accrues on, onto the maturity and the converts so we make money mining that's the most important thing everything else is non-cash where we are distinguished from our competitors is that uh, when we dig tungsten out the ground and sell it, we're profitable. So non-cash is very different from cash losses. And, and I think that as we've started to convert debt, as we accrue it, uh, you know, and as we have obviously changes in, in currency rates, it shows non-cash losses. But this is all very clear in the MDMA. If you bother to read it, you would see it. So I thank my competitor. Good on you. And I uh, hope to see you soon. All right. This is one way to go on it. Uh, listen, it's 4.30. We're going to end up on that. I, one personal comment at the end. Uh, yes, going um, over budget or just tightly of 3%. Uh, I can tell you there's going to be managing, role, uh, managing thesis written in the master about what you did in a few years from now. Because in the mining industry, this is something extremely difficult to pull off, especially in your situation and in a country like, uh, like you're operating in. So um, I think it's extremely positive. Positive. That being said, keep the good work. Very happy to meet you again, uh, Lewis, and see you again for the next update. Thanks very much. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.